Top Tip Tuesday time again, Bob here from Insidium. And on today's video, we're gonna be having a look at using the Nexus question neighbor search to generate this cool kind of spawning effect inside the cracks and crevices of scene geometry. So let's get started. In our scene, we have some parametric spheres here and they've been placed within an XP joint. And if I go forward a frame, you can see we're getting particles on the surface. Let's go to the XP emitter object tab. We're in emitter shape object. We're offsetting that three centimeters from the surface for each particle to give us a bit of wiggle room. And we have got our XP join object dragged into the object link field here. We're emitting from the polygon area. And then in the emission tab, we've got 60,000 particles just in shot on one frame uh, full lifespan and we have got no speed and no radius now we are in if we go to the display mode we're in squares display mode which means that even though the particles have no radius we can still see them um, the square mode doesn't care about the radius so what we want to do is we want to identify particles that are within these kind of crevice parts where our spheres join and we're going to use a neighbor search to do that so let's go to this nexus question and let me just show you actually if we untwirl this you can see that look there's a spherical field here that's not actually doing anything at the moment but if i hit play you'll see the field is animating over our spheres and we're going to use that a little bit later let's just switch that off for now so what we want to do is we want to identify these particles which are in the crevices. So let's go to the nexus question. We're going to bring in a new question and we're going to say if the particle uh, neighbours are greater than now this is this distance is uh, the distance at which each particle will search to see how many neighbors it has i'm going to put this on say 40 but this will be trial and error in your scene until you get a good range but let's just start with that we're going to go with within 40 centimeters if it has more than say 300 neighbors then do something and just so we can see this happening let's change the color of the particles so we'll do an action just leave it on that default yellow hit play ah okay so what this is saying is virtually every particle in this scene has more than 300 neighbors within 40 centimeters there's only a few white ones remaining so we need to increase this value so we only get these um, particles in the crevices because obviously they'll have more neighbors because they've got um particles from the different sphere surfaces so let's put this on say 400 and do that again just go forward a frame yes so look that has really isolated that further we could even up it a bit more let's put 420 see if we can get it even more defined yeah look just in those crevices now okay so that's looking good now what we want to do is incorporate our field so that this only happens once the particles have gone within the field so how do we do that well first we need to go to the question fields tab and drag this field in to the list so it's able to read it then let's go back to the object tab i'm going to hold control and just click off that and we're going to add a question that's going to ask about this field so let's bring in a new question and this is going to be if the particle field is greater than so it's greater than 0.5 on default so that's saying anywhere within this inner fall off it will count as being in the field. If you put it on zero, it would be anywhere inside the field itself. Let's just leave it on that. So this is gonna be our first question. Then we wanna do this particle neighbor search questions. Let's put that as a child, that becomes our sub question. And let's put it on and. So both have to pass and then it sets the color. So let's have a look. We should get the same effect, but only yes, look, when the field goes over those particles. Brilliant. So that is working. Now what we want to do is change the radius of our particles so they grow up, not the color. So we can just get this set color and let's change it to, in fact, I'll leave it on for now just so we can see what's going on. But let's add another action and this one will be set radius. Let's set it to say three and we can add a little bit of delay, which will add a bit of kind of springiness to that growth. That's gonna look nice. Now we're not actually gonna see anything different here because again, we're not viewing particle radius. If we go to our emitter 
display options let's change it to a mode that does display the radius we can go on to say circles ah yes so as soon as we've done that we've got the effect the particles with zero radius we can no longer see the ones that have been affected by our question setup um, are here um, with our circles so let's hit play and yeah they kind of grow on we get that nice kind of springiness because of that delay that's looking nice now we can get these particles to interact with each other at the moment they don't care about each other let's go to insidium x particles nexus and bring in a push so these particles as they grow up will push each other apart we'll put the distance mode on particle radius put that strength up hit play and now we're going to get a bit more kind of animation and movement as they push each other apart as they scale up that's looking nice so now we can get rid of that color we don't obviously want them to be yellow so let's just get rid of this color and we'll use a modifier to color them instead we're going to go to insidium x particles nexus and bring in an nx color we're going to do a gradient by parameter layer and let's just load in um, something to make it really obvious. We're going to do this. Um, let's do this nice turquoise um, gradient. And we're going to map this gradient to the particle radius. Let's put the minimum on two. So a particle with a radius of two will get this blue color. And a particle with a radius of six will get this orangey red color. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking really nice, isn't it? Fantastic. So let's have a look at this at render time then. We'll go into our Redshift camera. Let's go to Redshift, Render View. Move that up here and we'll just start rendering. So what we want to do is render these particles. So on our emitter, let's go to Tags, uh, Render Tags, Redshift Object. And in the Particles tab, let's do some Sphere Instances. There are our spheres. Now this is looking a little bit too... Um, saturated this color so let's just go back to our color now what's nice about this is because we can layer and blend um, our color layers we don't actually have to make adjustments to our gradient we could go in here and kind of reduce the saturation but we could do it procedurally look let's just add a set color layer and put it on top let's just set this to a gray color and then set the blend mode to say screen just go forward a frame and now look we've knocked out some of that saturation if you want some more of that saturation back in you can just in the set color look just reduce the strength of that screened layer let's go forward a frame and we've brought some of that saturation back in so it's really cool layering these and using the blend modes because we can adjust gradients um, uh, without uh, procedurally without having to mess around with these individual knots so that is how we can use nexus uh, question with the neighbor search to identify these crevice areas and then how we can generate this really nice animation with our growing on colored particles with a simple layered nexus color to get this nice particle color in the render